You know it. We know it. Next year is creeping up quick. If you want to win inside your niche in 2024, you need tech that puts you in the pilot seat. The new HubSpot Sales Hub will help you close out the year strong and kickstart your success for 2024. Teams can collaborate on every inch of the customer journey and keep operations running smoothly with a comprehensive prospecting workspace and powerful sales analytics tools that keep data connected across teams. They'll help you whip up assets and execute tasks that used to take hours out of your workday. HubSpot Sales Hub lets you accelerate every facet of your sales operation with precision. And with over 1,400 integrations, there are tons of ways to mix in new features. So finish out Q4 strong and gear up for the new year with HubSpot Sales Hub. Learn more at HubSpot.com slash sales. Good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday, August 30th. I'm Mark Dent here with Rob Litterst, and this is the Hustle Daily Show. Travel is on the rise. This year, tourism-related jobs are expected to get back to 95% of pre-pandemic levels, and international trips were at about 80% of pre-pandemic levels in the first quarter this year. But something else has gone up with the number of travelers. Improper decorum and misdemeanor arrests, really bad things. We are basically living in the age of the misbehaving tourist, and we're gonna explain all of that. But first, let's talk about everything else happening in business and tech. OpenAI just launched ChatGPT Enterprise, an advanced version of its AI tools for corporate clients. And this is kind of strange, Rob, because OpenAI's biggest backer is Microsoft. And Microsoft recently launched something called Bing Chat Enterprise that's kind of similar, right? And I mean, this is one of the interesting things about OpenAI being an open platform. You know, you can kind of go two routes. You can just kind of stay open and monetize through access, Mm -hmm. or you can release your own proprietary products. And it seems like OpenAI is doing the latter along with kind of letting people build on top of it too. And I think these kind of conflicts of interest are just going to continue to happen. The interesting thing about Microsoft is so much of what they do feels retention focused rather than like customer acquisition focused. Yeah. So it is interesting. I wonder if it's not actually going to have a massive impact on Microsoft's business, but I do see these types of conflicts coming up more and more with OpenAI for sure. Microsoft being this big investor, it's 49% stake in the startup of OpenAI. So they're just two percentage points away from being able to say like, you guys can't do that. (laughs) Tensions will be high at the next board meeting. Yeah, for sure. Let's move on. College campuses are about to have a lot fewer cash registers. And that's because Amazon is partnering with Grubhub to bring its just walk out technology to colleges across the U.S. That's basically where you can just walk into a store, get your stuff and then leave and it all charges stuff for you. We assume that that's going to take an awful lot of hard work to get all that tech going. And there are a lot of questions at Amazon about where people are going to do that hard work. You know, Rob, you were just having a conversation on the podcast yesterday about return to work. And now it seems like it's Amazon's turn to sort of be in the center of all this. The CEO, Andy Jassy, allegedly told employees who want to stay home that it's not going to work out and they're going to have to start coming in. And that policy, at least for now, is three days a week. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about this JM Smucker strategy of the core week where they have a few different weeks throughout the year where they really kind of prioritize people being in person and getting together and doing kind of work outings after work so that they can, I guess, kind of forge that closeness and and that camaraderie across their teams in person, which I totally get. I think there is a lot of value to having people in person and working together and seeing each other face to face. But it is tough to see this going well with where work trends are going. I mean, work from home has just become so mainstream, and I think so many people have really integrated it into their life. Mm -hmm. But managing a remote team and a remote company is so different than being in person. There's so many things that can be lost in translation over asynchronous communication. So I get why a lot of these companies are trying to get people back into the office. I think another thing is a lot of these people wonder you know, how much work is actually getting done at home. There have been reports that have shown that people are productive at home, but I think there have probably been reports that show the opposite as yeah, well. Yeah, I mean, the data is kind of all over the place, and that's actually sort of a question at hand here in Amazon, according to Insider, which broke this story. Amazon is very much a data-driven company, as one would expect, and the employees were asking Jassy for the data on why this was a good idea to bring everybody back. Love it. Jassy just said it was a judgment call. On to the next story, X, formerly known as Twitter, and LinkedIn are both working to add pass key support. 
This would ultimately allow secure password-free access to their apps through biometric tools like Face ID and Touch ID. So the future is coming soon, folks. And finally, Disney is going to test the solution for its mounting subscriber losses at its Indian streaming service, Disney Plus Hotstar, Free Cricket. Disney is going to air live matches from the Sports World Cup on the app this fall. Disney Plus in the U.S. has also had some subscriber retention and revenue issues. Rob, if you could have anything added to Disney Plus, what do you think it would be that would actually make more people stay glued to that app? This is such a good question. I think Disney Plus has a really, really strong assortment of content. They have their tentpole franchises with Disney. They have their Marvel franchises. They have Star Wars. They have Pixar. A really underrated aspect of Disney's IP is Hulu. I found myself watching a lot of Hulu shows. My wife and I are watching The Bear right now and Only Murders in the Building. And I hadn't even really taken a step back and like realized, oh, wow, we're watching a ton of Hulu. The one thing that Disney could really do to get it to the next level, and Cricket touches on it, is bring in more live sports. Mm -hmm. If they can figure out ESPN streaming. Yeah, which it has. Right, which they have, but it's kind of a wonky product. They're working on it, to say the least. The one thing that I will say that they've done well is like, I've watched the US Open on the ESPN Plus app, and they tend to do golf and tennis really well. Some of the other sports, I think it comes down to who owns the rights and you're not always going to be able to play those. Yeah. And it comes down to like a lot of like obscure college basketball games (laughs) in the month of January. Bowling Green versus Akron or something like that. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. So do not move that to Disney Plus, at least not yet. Yeah. No need. So moving on, let's go to our top story today, which, as we mentioned, is about tourists behaving badly. There was a story in the Washington Post that laid out this story that I'm going to share. There was a 19-year-old tourist at the Leaning Tower of Pisa earlier this month who carved their initials into the Tower of Pisa. And the craziest thing about it is that that story was kind of just a recycled version of a lot of other stories that are happening around the world this summer. And there's been so much initial carving throughout the globe at the Colosseum in Rome, There was some name and initial scratching going on in Japan at an 8th century temple. Tourists have gone up this year in number, and there's just been a lot of these little kind of vandalism and crimes that have happened. It's insane. This is just like so foreign to me, (laughs) pun intended. I don't understand how you can go into some of these beautiful places like this and do stuff like that. I'm so excited to go to these places in Europe and Asia and elsewhere that have like these unbelievable monuments and places that I've like dreamt of going for my whole life. It's I I can't believe it. I think a lot of tourists just need to get kicked out. They need to be banned from traveling forever. Well, so that is happening in some places. Rob Bali deported 136 tourists this year. Good. Tourism is up a lot in Italy, for instance. 86% year over year on international arrivals. Earlier this year, they announced that they were tightening some of their laws regarding vandalism. Now vandals can face fines of $11,000 to $65,000 for doing things like carving their initials into the Colosseum. The man who did that is facing up to five years in prison and a fine of $16,000. So these penalties are going up. And of course, the number of tourists is going up, which in some ways might explain why we're starting to see all this anecdotal info about more vandalism. But there's some other phenomenon here. It seems like COVID restrictions have been part of it. We were all cooped up for a long time, and now people are just doing what they feel like doing. Wasn't there like a massive spike in record numbers of people getting kicked off flights when they opened airports again after COVID just because people were cooped up and kind of going stir crazy? It definitely seems like that could extend to tourism. There was a spike 47% globally between 2021 and 2022 on unruly air travelers. So yeah, it's like the travel space is just, it's really changed. And to be clear, travel has also gotten a little more complicated since the pandemic as well. As we know, airlines have gotten more expensive. They've really kind of altered their schedules so that they have fewer flights with more people on each flight. So some of the small luxuries that used to exist in travel, even those have kind of been whittled away since 2020 as well. Yeah, it's freaking crazy. I think social media and striving to go viral is another thing that can push tourists to just do ridiculous stunts and do ridiculous things. And it feels like more and more people are becoming creators, quote unquote, or influencers, whatever you want to call them. 
And I honestly think that plays a role. I think if you watch some of these up and coming aspiring influencers Mm, who want to make a spectacle, doing some of this stuff could get them followers, could get them views. And unfortunately, when getting followers is the name of the game, the incentives don't really align with what's actually appropriate behavior as a tourist. Right, exactly. And now with Labor Day coming up, there's going to be a lot of travel. So everyone listening here, I know you'll be on your good behavior. So thank you. That's going to do it for us today. Thanks again for tuning into the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Robert Hartwig and our executive producer is Darren Clark. We have a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. So if you're not signed up, please go get signed up at thehustle.co slash email. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey, I want to tell you about another podcast brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, the audio destination for business professionals. This one is called My First Million, hosted by Sam Parr and Sean Perry. My First Million features famous guests like Alice Hermosi, Sophia Amoruso, and Hassan Minaj sharing their secrets for how they made their first million and how to apply their learnings to capitalize on today's business trends and opportunities. So for example, in a recent episode, Sean discusses how his former intern went from making $30,000 a year to $40,000 in one minute by taking one big bet. And today, he's a 22-year-old millionaire thanks to a couple early investments. Want to know more? You can listen to My First Million wherever you get your podcasts. 